Welcome back students. So, in the previous lecture, we have uh, till now in this particular module, we have seen the heterogeneous catalysis involving transition metal catalyst and we have also seen the in the previous lecture, the methanol to gasoline and we have seen several processes like Sassol process, then we have the mobile process and then we also have seen uh, the different ways like we have the T gas process, uh, all these we have already discussed. So, now the final lecture of this module is concentrated on the fuel additives. So, this is what we will discuss in today's lecture, the fuel additives. So, we will discuss what do you mean by fuel additives in general, okay. So, we will discuss about the definition of fuel additive, you should know because uh, you, since you will be, most of this processes involves catalyst. So, you should know what the fuel additive is and an example is you can have MTB, similar to MTB you have other compounds also ethyl tert butyl ether, MTB is methyl tert butyl ether, then you can also have ETB, say all this. Uh, so, these are the different compounds which are used as oxygenates in the fuel. Why they are used as oxygenates in the fuel? So, as to increase their research octane number. So, research octane number is a very important parameter, those who are uh, familiar in gasoline and diesel engines, particularly for gasoline engine, higher the number, higher is the efficiency. So, we will see that. Then we will see the process of the manufacture of MTB and then there is an alternative method which has been adopted which actually uses a heat integration much more effectively that is the catalytic distillation. So, this I will be just discussing the method how they are doing because to overcome a certain limitation, okay. This is an improved version of the conventional MTBE process that is it uses both reaction and distillation in a single column. So, first let us discuss the research octane number. So, the research octane number why we are uh, studying this formation because this is very important but the production of this fuel additives is nowadays very uh, important because this additives if they are added to the gasoline it will increase this anti knocking characteristic. So, it will not knock. So, it means the, now this MTB, the problem is with this MTB, nowadays uh, it has been replaced. So, you must have read with the MTB, people have moved to ethanol blending, uh, ethanol, because MTB is having certain problems, right, they get contaminated, okay, in the ground stream or in the ground, in the soil. So, people are moving towards the ethanol blended petrol. So, but anyway, ethyl tert-butyl ether is still there, it is widely prevalent, even though their production level is going down day by day because of the advent of ethanol. But you should see what this MTB is supposed to do. It is just like if you have a gasoline, which means you are having only, uh, you must be knowing what is octane number. The octane number of uh, any fuel is what? It is the mixture of how much of the branched alkane is present, that is, at 2 to 4 trimethyl pentane is a mixture of 2 to 4 trimethyl pentane and heptane, okay. So, higher the branch number, more will be the amount of octane number. Now, what is research octane number now? So, let us see what is mean by knocking first, then we will go to this octane rating. So, like we have these two diff different types of engine, one is the petrol engine and petrol or gasoline, if I am writing, they means the same and then you have the diesel engine. So, the difference between these two is uh, you must be knowing uh, primarily this petrol what you do is you take air and take fuel and then you compress it. You compress it and then ignite it, okay. So, it is a four stroke engine you must have familiar with and then you ignite it through a spark plug, okay. So, this way you can get the, the auto cycle, you must be aware of the auto cycle, it works on that phenomena. But in this case, the air and fuel is mixed together, they are compressed together. But in the case of diesel, only air is compressed and then it is fuel is injected, okay. Fuel is injected, okay, fuel is injected. So, now it means that uh, then uh, it does the same thing as before for diesel engine. So, problem is with this petrol, we have to pay attention on this petrol because in this petrol, if the air and fuel is compressed, so it should not self ignite. It means that it when it is compressed, after that only when we put ignition, then only it should be combusted. So, compression, then ignition, then combustion. 
okay that exhaust so i'm not writing the other steps you know then exhaust so the entire thing should be compressed now what happens if it has a knocking tendency it means the combustion front the combustion front the fuel mixture will not be ignited with the combustion front but there will be small pockets of the air and fuel mixture which may be combusted intermediately so it may not happen with the ignition with the spark plug ignition but before that so to avoid that you add additive you have additives these additives are called fuel additives i should mention fuel additives so that's why we talk about octane number so and the another issue is so everything should be combusted because what happens is this methyl tertiary butyl mtbe if you add you are adding oxygen atom to it okay you are adding oxygen atom to it to the fuel mixture because in the fuel when you talk about fuel you have only the linear chain and the branch chain there's no oxygen atom so when you are adding this oxygen it means it ensures that the exhaust you should not form any soot or benzene or such other aromatic compounds but only this carbon dioxide and water vapor that is what it is ensures so it has serves two purpose primarily it is used for the anti knocking element so the octane rating of a fuel how is it measured it is measured by running it in a test engine with a varied so what you do you vary the compression ratio here the compression ratio under control condition of temperature and pressure and compare the results to those having isooctane and n-heptane so isooctane is 224 trimethyl pentane so this is isooctane and heptane if you take the mixture which is what we know the blends of isoactin and heptane you control it you take different composition and you take your own fuel and see what is the octane rating how much is the octane rating till what time it does not ignite or the combustion front it ignites only through the combustion front so you measure that that is the research octane number so during this stage the compression ratio here is also altered to challenge the anti knocking tendency so you keep on changing the ratio until there is knocking so it is challenging the anti knocking ratio so with increase in the compression ratio it will increase the likelihood of knocking okay so because as we compress more and more the air and fuel mixture the more it will likely to combust or it will ignite on its own that's what we want to avoid that is what we want to see and we report the research octane number instead of only octane number so now as i told you mtb is replaced by ethanol because of the environmental concerns so mtb and ethyl the both synthesis are similar both of these so i will discuss mtb in this lecture so these are used as fuel oxygenates so because mtb has a very high octane rating of 118 this is the octane number so that's why it is used if you add this mtb to the mixture of to mixture of 224 or isooctane and heptane it will increase the octane number so because it is a octane number more than 100 so it is a used as a gasoline octane booster so these are the compounds so you have ether basically you have methyl on one side uh, ch3 on one side this methyl group and the remaining all uh, this third butyl so it is tertiary so you have this butyl means there are three so since this carbon atom is attached to four so it is third butyl okay so now uh, this is third butyl this is called mtb in short and the same thing you can also have ethyl third butyl same just you have this instead of this you get the ch2 and ch3 this ethyl group is there so this is called the so this should be etb okay third butyl and ethyl third butyl ether so these are the two component but we will focus our attention only on this mtb so what happens is we have to see first the thermodynamics of mtb so what is the starting material for mtb the reactants are isobutene and methanol okay so isobutene and methanol even though i am writing isobutene ethanol there are other inert hydrocarbons with isobutene because this isobutene is appearing along with other c4 such as butene butene isobutene are all isomers then butane okay then all this will be together present with isobutene so that's why when i talk about isobutene it is not the pure isobutene it is coming something along with c4 but the other components are inert in nature so they don't participate in the reaction so what is the reaction is all about reaction is about the methanol and isobutene reacting together okay so first we have to see the thermodynamics what permits the thermodynamics and if we can uh, just fix 
if we can fix the pressure. So if I draw the thermodynamics, so I draw here isobutene the in the y axis and the x axis. So y axis it will be the isobutene conversion. in percentage or I just want it maybe in fraction I can also write. So it is 1, 100 percent conversion, this is 0. So what I will do, I will put a kink here. So it starts from 0 0.6, okay, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and then 0 0.9, okay. This is the isobutene conversion. So what we do is we take the molar ratio of equal molar ratio, we take the equal molar ratio for both isobutene as well as methanol, then this is the temperature. So if I want to draw the temperature, let us say I start with 300 Kelvin here, then I go till 500, okay, till 500 Kelvin. So in between let us make some uh, 350, 400 and 450, okay. So this is the isobutene conversion. So what do you do is with the equimolar concentration, it will die down till this is that. Uh, so you have the concentration of methanol to isobutene CH3. Ratio as equal to unity. So it means that uh, your conversion is highest at this temperature 350 Kelvin and the pressure we have kept as 20 bar. So it means that uh, you have to be it is plotted in terms of, so if I want to suppose increase this ratio what happens not much change. If I want to increase the ratio suppose to 1.1 more of methanol excess of methanol, so you will have a slightly higher conversion. So this is unity and this is let us say 1.1. So 1.1 that is what you do excess of methanol. So the most of the plants which they operate is in this part. So if I want to draw this line, so it is this plant, this particular temperature and 1.1 molar ratio most of them do operate. So that is why to get the maximum conversion of isobutene. So this is the based on thermodynamics, you have the temperature, you have the molar ratio and you have the pressure to be fixed. The pressure is 20 bar, temperature is around close to 350 Kelvin and the molar ratio, ratio is around close to 1.1. So you have excess of methanol, okay. So this is about the thermodynamic or equilibrium conversion. So let us move ahead. So what is the reaction happening? The reaction happening is you have methanol. methanol reacting with dimethyl ether, sorry not ether, the isobutylene. So this is isobutylene, CCH2, then you have CH3 here, CH3 here, okay. So this is a reversible reaction. So I am not showing uh, this other components in this feed which is butane, butene, so I am just writing isobutene because methanol is reacting only with isobutene where methanol is present excess of 10 percent. So this will give you, uh, that is it, we will get uh, methyl third butyl ether, so you have tertiary, so you have CH3 in all the places, so you have CH3 here, CH3 here, sorry, so you should have a oxygen atom is not there because we do send, because that is why they are called as oxygenated compounds. So you have the oxygen atom here, MTBE. Then uh, the delta H is around, uh, my, it is exothermic, delta H is around minus 37.5 kilojoules per mole. So this is what, so it is an exothermic reaction. So to uh, undergo this reaction, uh, they use a compound which is called polyoxometalates. Polyoxometalate is, you know, it is manufactured by various companies. So one of them is Sinata. So they write down in this manner. So the catalyst is poly 
oxo metallates me polyoxo metallates these are the catalyst medium so these uh, polyoxo metallates commercially one of them is called s600 is a catalyst and uh, in the company which manufactures is sincata s i n c a t a okay so basically these are some uh, polyoxo metallates means it will have different transition element in it so this will be uh, together with molybdenum tungsten tungsten and your vanadium so all the transition materials metals are used here okay so these are the catalyst medium uh, catalyst surface catalyst fine once this catalyst in the presence of catalyst it will convert methanol with isobutene to form methyl tetrabutyl ether so in this feed as i told you c4 hydrocarbons comprising the only 20 to 30% by weight is isobutene remaining are all inert c4 hydrocarbons so what are the other compounds as i told you it may be butane it may be isobutene or n butene so the typical so they don't take part in this reaction so the reaction circumstances they will be there the inert medium so obviously they can also you know absorb some heat because they are inert hydrocarbons they don't participate so in the process now let us go for the process what is the process it's a sequence of two or three liquid phase reactors so the entire process takes place in the liquid phase medium the reaction occurs in the liquid phase it employs fixed bed reactors and about 10% surplus methanol i told you why 10% surplus methanol due to thermodynamic limits so 10% surplus methanol where isobutene conversion of 90 to 96% are achievable which is slightly less than the thermodynamic maximum conversion because in the plot if you see we got almost close to 100% conversion of isobutene so it is less than that 100 so the distillation used to separate now mtb is separated from the unconverted c4 fraction which consists of butane butene and some isobutene so isobutene means which has not reacted methanol is also which is not reacted so the methanol once it has obtained it is then recycled back the issue is because this isobutene and mtb all these are very difficult to separate because this isobutene uh, the density wise is very similar to mtb so that will stay in the product of mtb so almost 10 percent is lost so that's what is the loss of 3 to 10 percent is there of isobutene so let us see how we uh, discuss this flow sheet so this flow sheet consists of reactors and a distillation column so you have two units together so your first is the reactor so i have the heart of the process is a reactor so you have the reactor here so you have the catalyst bed here catalyst bed here so what you have is here you have two feeds getting together so methanol is added here methanol is added here and the c4 feed c4 feed so what is this c4 feed butane isobutane butene butane butene all this is coming together as c4 feet okay so these are the your starting materials once you do that you keep this as i told you the temperature from 320 to 360 kelvin and the pressure of 20 bars so it's a exothermic reaction so obviously you need to cool it down so what you do you send it here and you cool it down here you cool this effluents okay then what you do you send it to the another series of reactor so it's a series of reactor okay so once you cool it down then you send it you have another reactor here on side of it so again you have a catalyst bed k 
okay and you send this effluent after cooling back to the second reactor okay and uh, some part is again fed here some of the effluent is again fed here so as to circulate the isobutene again so we have not separate out the products yet the reaction is going on so it has been separated some part is sent back as a cold feed inside the reactor because it is exothermic reaction now these are the reactors now once the reaction is complete you take out the product and send it to a distillation column so you have a you should have a distillation column here this is the distillation column so tray tower so you have the towers here okay so now what you do you separate out this is the mtbe product okay and you have the other components along with methanol coming on the top so what you do you take a methanol separation you separate out the methanol from it so methanol recovery section methanol recovery is just separate out the methanol the remaining unreacted will be there unreacted c4 hydrocarbon unreacted c4 hydro carbon you have the unreacted c4 hydrocarbon coming out of the top and what you do with the methanol again send it back recycle it recycle it and send it to the starting diagram a starting reactor so this is the distillation column and a reactor so this way you can the methanol recycle is taking out here methanol recycle and this is distillation column you have the mtbe product so around 3 to 10% of this mtbe isobutene is present here okay so here you see you have two three in fact two reactors one distillation so to avoid this can we do the distillation and reaction in a one column so that is what where the catalytic distillation column came about okay so we'll see that process then the catalytic distillation column in the catalytic distillation column what happens is uh, you have the methanol and c4 as before you have a column first you have a reactor the same way but you have a reactor you have the methanol likewise you have the methanol ch3oh and the c4 feed okay okay so in this what you do is this is the catalyst bed which is made up of this transition metals so what to do let me just complete the diagram then i will explain you so you have the effluents cool it down you cool this effluent and then send it to a catalytic distillation column okay instead of a normal distillation column so you have a so catalytic distillation column means something like this you have uh, okay so maybe i'll just put the feed here so you have a catalyst bed here and you have okay these are the two so those who are, have read the mass transfer you know this is the stripping section and this is the rectification section so in this below the stripping section you will get mtbe as the product
and above. So, this part again you will have a product which is having methanol recovery, the methanol recovery is there. So, you recover the methanol You recover the methanol and then send it back again to the initial, the, this is called CH3OH recycle. So, ultimately what you will have after the recovery you will get unreacted C4. Okay. So, this is the reaction zone. So, it means the reaction occurs here only, the remaining part it is all distillation column. So, uh, it is rectification section is at the top. So, what it will do? It will uh, just allow the components other than MTB to pass through and in this particular section, the stripping section, the stripping section it will just strip the desired component that is MTB and uh, release it. Suppose you are sending, so what happens is there is a set of two reactors here, if you notice one is the fixed bed reactor, fixed bed reactor, another is the catalytic distillation column, catalytic distillation column. Okay how the reaction occurs? You have the feed as before. Now, what happens? It is the entire product is converted into two parts. Initially, in the fixed bed reactor, the conversion occurs at, so if I want to write down here, high temperature, the conversion occurs at high temperature. So, if you have a high temperature, you have a high rate of reaction, high reaction rate, high reaction rate, but you will have a low equilibrium, low So, please keep this in mind. So, this fixed bed reactor what it does is it conducts the reaction methanol plus isobutene to convert to MTBE at high temperature. So, obviously, you have a high reaction rate, but since this exothermic reaction or yield will be lowered. So, then the products are sent to the catalytic distillation column and what happens here is exactly the opposite. The entire reaction is carried at low temperature, low reaction rate. So, this reaction zone will carry at low temperature, low reaction rate and but high equilibrium conversion. So, so first you have high temperature, then the low temperature. The purpose of working it in low temperature is that uh, you need the heat of reaction. So, if you have the heat of reaction, you can use that heat to operate the distillation column. So, the continuously the heat is removed in the distillation column. So, if it removes the heat, it gives a distillation column, it means the heat is integrated. So, the whatever heat is generated by the exothermicity is used for the distillation column to separate the components in the rectification and stripping section. In this manner, the entire catalytic distillation column operates in a isothermal manner, close to isothermal manner instead of adiabatic. That is the uh, purpose of, so initially you do use a fixed bed reactor, convert it and then use that and send it to 
because it cannot uh, process high volume of the feed in the catalytic distillation column. So, you would a fixed bed reactor to get a high reaction rate at least and then a low, but a conversion will be lower. So, then what you do when, when it goes to the catalytic distillation column, you insert the feed just below the catalytic reaction zone. Once it goes to the catalytic reaction zone, what you do is the reaction occurs and the products are the separated in the rectification and stepping column respectively. So, this isobutene conversion can be enhanced by the continuous removal of the product. So, this product is continuously be removed. So, if it completely removes, so it means you are enhancing the forward reaction. Okay? So, let us summarize what you have said. So, a fixed bed reactor is placed before the catalytic decision column. In the reactor, the fixed bed reactor, the majority of conversion occurs at relatively high temperature. High, reaction, high temperature means high reaction rate, low equilibrium conversion. The rest of the reaction occurs in the catalytic distillation column at a lower temperature. So, a continuous removal of MTBE produced in the reaction section allows the conversion. So, it means what happens after the reaction is conducted in the catalytic medium? The methanol, isobutene and the inert hydrocarbons flow upward. They will flow upward via the catalyst bed and then to a rectivation section which while the lower part, the lower region, the stripping section, it returns MTB in the liquid form. So, you have upper is and the lower, lower you have MTB and the upper you will have is the hydrocarbons, the C4 unreacted plus methanol. So, this methanol is again recycled back to the fixed bed reactor. This is the way they do a catalytic distillation column. So, what are the advantages of this catalytic distillation column? The isobutene conversion of above 99 percent are possible. This is the biggest advantage. The direct use of the exothermic heat of reaction for the distillative separation of reactants and products is an additional advantage. So, as I told you, it uses the exothermicity of the reaction to separate out the reactants and products. So, we call this as a perfect example of heat integration. So, heat given out in the reaction is taken up in the distillation column. The heat of reaction does not raise the temperature because why it does not raise the temperature? Because it is taken up by the distillation column. So, this results in a nearly isothermal reaction zone. Okay? So, this is what it does in the catalytic distillation column. Not only here, I have discussed if you remember, I also will be discussing the ethyl benzene that ethyl benzene formation or the production is also carried out in the catalytic distillation exactly for the similar analogy. Okay? So, this actually we now come to the end of this lecture and as well as the module as a whole. So, in this particular module what we discussed was primarily the heterogeneous catalysis, okay? heterogeneous catalysis usually in the form of transition metals. Most of the transition metals and the bulk chemicals were discussed. In the next module, what we will study is based on the homogeneous catalysis. We will discuss the reactors in the homogeneous catalysis and then we also will discuss several configuration, how this homogeneous catalyst, which way the homogeneous catalyst works, you have the ligand attached, so they should be soluble in some solvent, all this we will discuss in the next module. So, most of this, our uh, whatever we have discussed today, it is available in our textbook. And the remaining what you can do, you can go to this particular article, the link is given here, this link. You will come to know about this catalyst, the polyoxometallates, how they are used to produce tertiary ethers such as MTBE and ETBE. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm.